If you're still building in Elementor the slow way, you're wasting hours every week. Most people delete paddings manually, still use pixels for gaps, choose the wrong layout, or slow down their website with pop-up menus. It works, but it's slow and messy. So here are five real tricks that make you instantly quicker in Elementor. Subscribe for Elementor tutorials. Let's dive in. All right, let's fix one of the most common reasons why Elementor layouts look slightly off, even when you build everything correctly. Elementor adds a few hidden spacing settings by default, and they stack on top of each other. That creates subtle misalignments in your layout. Here's how to clean it up in three simple steps. First, the text widget. Elementor adds paragraph spacing by default, even if your text is just one single line. That creates a small bottom gap that makes your layout feel uneven. To fix it, open any page, click Site Settings, go to Typography, and set the paragraph spacing to zero. Save changes, and from now on, if you use global fonts, every text widget across your site will sit perfectly flush with no hidden gap underneath. Second, Elementor adds 10 pixels of padding to every container by default. If you nest containers, that padding stacks and often looks like extra spacing under your text. What I see often is that people fix this manually all the time. They grab the container, open the Advanced tab, and set the padding to zero. It works, but it is still a very slow way to do it. To fix this, stay inside Site Settings, open Layout, and set the default container padding to zero. This gives you full control over your spacing, and everything will line up cleanly again. And when containers sit directly on top of each other, use the Structure panel to select them. It's faster and much more precise. And third, if you want the cleanest spacing out of the box, use the Title widget instead of the Paragraph widget. It doesn't have that built-in paragraph behavior, so your text sits cleaner right away. Just remember to set the correct HTML tag manually. And that's how you fix Elementor's hidden spacing issues. Remove paragraph spacing, remove default container padding, and use the title widget when you want perfectly clean spacing. All right, the next workflow tweak is all about your global gaps. These gaps control the spacing between your elements inside containers when you use flex or grid, and they have a huge impact on how clean your layouts feel. The problem is that pixel values tend to create inconsistent spacing across your layout. You end up with different pixel gaps on different sections, and the whole design starts to feel slightly uneven from page to page. Here's how to fix it. Open any page, click on Site Settings, then open Layout. Right below your content width, you'll see the global row and column gaps. Switch both units from pixels to rem, and enter one clean, consistent value. Most professional layouts start somewhere around 1.5 rem, but choose whatever fits your design system. By the way, if you want to convert your exact pixel values to rem, I'm using a simple converter for that. The link is in the description. Just type in your pixel number and paste the rem value back into Elementor. Once your gaps use rem, your spacing stays consistent across your entire layout. Rem is a stable unit for design systems and gives you much cleaner, predictable spacing than pixel values. Every grid and every flex layout you drop onto a page already has the right spacing without you touching anything. One more tip. If you want tighter or wider spacing for a specific section later, always override it at the container level, not the site level. Your global rem gap should stay consistent because that's what keeps your design system stable across the entire website. This one change alone saves a surprising amount of time. All right, next super simple but important workflow trick, especially if you build portfolios, photography sites, or show full width photos. By default, when you drop an image widget into Elementor, the image size is often set to large, which is a 1024 by 1024 pixel version of your file. That's fine for small thumbnails, but if you use big full width hero photos or showcase images, they can look soft or slightly blurry because Elementor is displaying a downsized version. Here's the fix. Click on your image widget, open the settings on the left, and under Image Size, choose Full. That tells Elementor to use the actual uploaded file instead of the compressed version. 
Using full resolution keeps your images sharp on large screens, in hero sections, and anywhere you need high detail. But this only works if your original file is optimized. A 10 megabyte raw photo will slow down your site no matter what. I recommend keeping each image around 300 kilobytes or less and using a modern format like WebP or AVIF. That keeps the file small while still looking crisp. If you don't want to optimize every photo manually, you can use the built-in Elementor Image Optimizer. It compresses and resizes your files automatically. The link is in the description. So in short, full resolution plus optimized file size plus a modern format gives you sharp, clean images with good performance and a professional look. If you leave images on large 1024, some photos will always look slightly off, especially in full width layouts. And that small difference is enough to make a website feel cheap instead of polished. All right, trick number four. Mobile menus in Elementor can get messy pretty fast. If you try to squeeze a full navigation, logos, icons, and even mega menu content into the same small header, things start to break. And if you rely on the pop-up system for slide-out menus, you add extra complexity and a bit more JavaScript than necessary. Here's the fix. Instead of using bulky pop-ups for your mobile menu, search for Off Canvas. This widget gives you a clean way to separate your mobile navigation from your header while keeping everything lightweight and easy to manage. It sits hidden in your layout until you open it, and you can design the entire panel just like any other container. Generally, I'm a big fan of Elementor's menu widget. It has these individual tabs and you can build your own nested mega menu designs. But at least for me, I'm having troubles even opening the drop-down content tabs. Here's the drop-down. But as soon as I close this, I can't open it again. This widget is so messy, I gave up trying to find workarounds for the mega menu designs. So to keep me and hopefully you also sane, here's the fix. I split my workflow. Simple menu for desktop, off canvas for mobile. That combo has been the most reliable setup for me. Inside the off canvas panel, you can place your mobile menu, even just use the simple WordPress menu if you want to, add a call to action, or any layout you want to slide in. Then you link a trigger icon, usually a burger button or a custom SVG, and set it to open the menu. The close button works the same way. And here's the part I haven't mentioned yet. The off canvas panel is rendered directly in your HTML, which means search engines can read it, screen readers can read it, and you're not relying on JavaScript to build your menu every time someone opens it. Cleaner for SEO, easier for accessibility, and your menu behaves the same way no matter what device you're on. And honestly, the first time everything finally works without fighting breakpoints, it feels suspiciously like one of those life is good again moments. Before you try this, make sure two things are enabled in your Elementor settings, nested elements and the container layout. Both features need to be active, otherwise the off canvas widget won't even show up in your panel. If you're still in the old section and column system, you won't see it. All right, trick number five. This one is honestly one of the biggest unlocks in Elementor knowing when to use Flexbox and when to use Grid. Because both are powerful, both are fast, but they shine in completely different situations. And if you pick the wrong one, you end up fighting the layout instead of building it. So here's the simple rule I use. Flexbox is perfect when you want elements to flow in a single direction. Horizontal row, vertical stack, Flex is built for that. It gives you full control over alignment, spacing, wrapping, and order. It's super flexible and great for anything linear. But the moment you need a structured layout like 2x2, 3x3, 4 cards, product grids, galleries, pricing tables, whatever, Grid just wins. You tell it how many columns you want and it does the rest. When you switch to tablet, set it to two columns. On mobile, one column, done. No fiddling with percentages, no math, no guessing. And this is important. In Elementor, Grid breaks cleanly at every device size. Flexbox can do the same, but only if you manually manage widths or wrapping, which takes way longer. Let me give you a simple example. Say you have four service cards. With Grid, you change one number from four columns to two columns, and the layout is already perfect on tablet. On mobile, 
switch it to one column. That's it. Try doing that with Flexbox and you'll be editing each card individually, adjusting percentage widths, testing on three breakpoints, and losing way more time than necessary. So here's the takeaway. Use Flexbox for structure. Use Grid for layout. Once you start thinking this way, Elementor feels 10 times faster. All right, that's all five tricks. And if you want to take this even further, watch this video next. I break down Flexbox versus Grid in detail. It'll make your layouts cleaner and your workflow way faster. See you there.